Hi, I'm Ben Weisler from BenWeisler.com, and this is my first video in a series. This is the introduction. The series is called You, the Inspired Thought Leader. Later in the film, I'm going to give you three fundamental principles on how you can brand yourself as a thought leader in your field, or perhaps you want to increase your visibility in your company, or even improve how you communicate to your peers with an organization that you might lead or are part of. Uh, I'm in the home, a beautiful home of some friends of mine who are taking this video on their camera. And I just played for you Claire de Lune by Claude Debussy. Later in the video, I'm going to show you how Debussy changed the entire character of that melody with just one note. But let's get on to the video now. As I get into the content of this video, I want to introduce it with a definition of what I call an inspired thought leader. This is part of my own research and internal um, meditation and creative process where I came up with the phrase, you the inspired thought leader. We talk about entrepreneurship in terms of taking risk. An entrepreneur is a person who takes upon a risk for an organization, a business, his employers. He is financially responsible and takes on, on the risk, all the risk for the success or the failure of a business or a venture. In my definition of thought leader, I like that definition, but it's a person who takes a risk for an idea. He takes a risk for a strategy. She takes a risk for personal branding or stepping up and expressing himself or herself. That to me is a thought leader. It can be done through blogging, it can be done through uh, speaking around the country, or it could be writing for different people, or it can be in training sessions. Let me begin here with a story. This story that I'm about to tell you has a lot of impact for me and a lot of power when I'm dealing with new clients. The story is actually a true story and comes from a memory of hearing the story from my mother when I was very young. She was a teacher in a, in a high school, and the high school had a six-building campus. The six buildings were all built on a single block, and what was very controversial for that year is that the superintendent, who was a very outstanding person in the community, if not the whole state, um, he took the stand that they were going to build the best science and math building in the state of Illinois in any school, and they built it on the city block across the street from the rest of the high school. This was controversial because uh, the community and the teachers were worried about how the students were going to be able to cross the street to get to classes in time, what about weather, what to do. And he took a greater stand in saying that as they were building the building, there would be no landscaping planned. He did not plan for sidewalks, bushes, um, grass, anything, just the building. And the building was finished in time for the beginning of the school year. And again, no sidewalks, no landscaping. Went ahead and opened the school. There were a lot of complaints from the community, people wondering what's happening here. After the first month of the building being open, he took the school board, he took all the community members who were at the, that meeting, took them across the street and looked at the grounds of the building. And as they looked down, lo and behold, there were paths that were worn in the ground by the students and the teachers who had to get to the building. So he looked around and he said, that's where we're going to build the sidewalks. And the result was a beautiful grounds for the campus, 
The sidewalks were direct. They were in a geometrical pattern. Uh, they, some of them crossed each other. And more amazingly, in front of the grand entrance, there was a circle of area, circular area that was uh, bored out, which became a courtyard. And the result is something more beautiful than they could have planned. The very first fundamental principle I want to share with you today towards becoming an inspired thought leader is a mission statement. Create a mission statement for yourself. It doesn't matter if you're a leader of an organization, inside of an organization, or if you're a person in transition who wants to be seen and become uh, a thought leader in your field. A personal mission statement gives you integrity and congruence with your audience. When you are making a decision what it is you're going to take a stand on, you need something to create that foundation. The superintendent of the schools was, in my story, was very, very secure with his decisions because he knew where he was going. A mission statement has two parts. The first part is a vision of the world, which has a statement of the basic needs for a perfect world for you. The second statement the second part of the statement is an action statement, and that's the actions you will take based on your skills and your interests to make that happen. For example, my personal mission statement is that I create a safe, sacred, loving world by accepting and expressing who I am. The perfect world is a safe, sacred, loving world, which I create through my actions of accepting who I am and expressing who I am. It is also the basis upon which this video is created. The second fundamental principle towards becoming a thought leader is to accept who you are. Now this is the part of the story where the paths were ground into the ground by the students in our story. You need to find out where the paths are for your personal branding and this is done by interviewing your friends, your family, people who work for you, people who are your clients, your customers, ask them specifically the same questions that you would ask if you were doing a focused or targeted marketing research um, group. The same questions, all the way from the bottom of the organization to the top. Another way of doing this is using your social media applications online. You can use your Facebook page, you can use a blog, you can use Twitter. Your, the comments, the thing that people check like to or make comments on, count the number of comments that you get to certain things that you say. You can even do a test market for this with Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter by evaluating how people respond. So look at the world around you, see what people say, see what, how people react to you, and ask them direct questions who are you? Or why is it that I'm good at this? Or why is it that you've chosen me? What you are doing is finding the paths. Now we're at the final fundamental principle towards becoming a thought leader. This is where you express who you are. The basis of this is the paths of step number two. We now know who we are and what we stand for with our personal mission statement. And the second principle, we've established what our reputation is, what we're good at, and what people see. Now comes the time to express that. And when I say express it, I mean with full creativity. Reach in, find what it is that inspires you, makes you excited, and then just do it. What's very important here is the use of metaphor or analogy, but this is where we make concrete what we are trying to express earlier. In my case, this video is an example of that. I went out and I found out that people don't understand what I do when they read it. I've hired professional writers, I've had expert help in trying to come up with a way to write down what it is that I do and people don't really fully understand it until they work with me. So I decided, let's create a video where I tell you what I do. And with these three fundamentals, we get to the basic um, principles that I would do when I work with a person for the first time. 
So in summary, we have three fundamental principles that I use in developing inspired thought leaders. The first is create a personal mission statement. Second, find the paths. I keep saying find the paths, but what we learned that what that is is define who you are. But the point is you're not doing the definition. The people you work with, the people you live with, and the people that you hire are the people who will help you define this. And then third of all, express it creatively with stories and metaphors. When working with me, I use a lot of processes like the Herman Brain Dominance System, which is a scientific measure of how you prefer to think and how you learn and how you communicate. I'm a certified creative problem solver and I'm certified in knowledge management. I'm very proud of my ability to teach and also to nurture the highest performance possible from the people that I work with. And I'm inviting you, please, to connect with me. You can find those resources on this web page if you're at my website at benwexler.com. So below this video is an area where you can put your comments, and I want to hear what you have to say about this video. Also, there are ways that you can communicate with me directly by the links on the page. If you're seeing this on YouTube or another source, I'm encouraging you to go to benwexler.com find the video on my website and leave comments there or uh, link to me with the links that I give you. I hope this was very helpful to you and now I'm going to go back to the piano at my friend's house and give the one piece of information I promised at the beginning of the video. I have, hope you have a wonderful day and please leave comments below. Thank you. Okay, now we're back at the piano. And I'm going to show you how Debussy, with one note, changed the entire character of the music that I played at the beginning. Whenever I perform this piece, when I play the intro, I never introduce the piece. And as soon as I play that, everyone in the audience, there's a, there's a thrill going through the audience. Oh, I know that piece. And it's so popular. And then when I get to the part of the melody where it goes... Everybody relaxes into the, the flavor of the piece. It's a very dreamy, relaxing type, relaxing type of piece. Well, at the end of the piece, when he brings the melody back, he adds one note that changes that character. Instead of relaxation, there's another feeling. Let me see if you can hear it. So I'm just going to play a little section here. just by adding one note you get a whole different feeling where something is coming to an end and the audience feels oh well it's going to end now and with that I'm going to end this video I want to thank you for joining me and I want to encourage you to please click on the links below this movie and put in some comments I'm, I want to hear what you have to say about this video if it was helpful to you or not and I hope you'll come back for the next one thank you